the very day that I met Bruce. I don't know why it went through my mind. But I knew that I was seeing somebody very talented, you know. And the words of a, a, a choir director in the church that I was used to go to, when she was telling us a story about Beethoven, and somebody badmouthed him a little bit, and, and this guy said to his companion, don't you know that if anybody knows who we are 25 years from now, it'll only be because we knew Beethoven. And, and those words kind of went through my mind the day I met him, and I never dreamed I'd outlive him. He's a lot younger than me. And here it is about 20 years later, and they're seeking out people uh, who knew him, you know. And I'm like, damn, I, isn't it funny that I thought of that on the, on the very first day? Apart from the teaching, you got to know Bruce quite well personally. Could you tell us a little bit about this? Well, <clears throat> he was looking for a, a, a handful of people to be the nucleus of his, his group. And so he was going to give us special attention. And the group kind of thinned out, and I guess he felt bad about it. And I did. I felt bad too, really, because uh, people wouldn't show or something. But it ended up I got invited to his house a lot on Sunday. He'd he'd spend the whole day messing around, you know. And uh, sometimes there was only one or two people, maybe Herb Jackson or or somebody else. And and I was more advanced than these people, so I'd really pick his brain, you know. And, uh, and you know that's what he told me. He says. Uh, you know, I want to teach you everything. And I said, yeah, and I know why. You want me to be the battler out here when, you know, try out this old man, see? And I was scared. I didn't want to be fighting karate champions, and that's all he had, <laughs> you know? I was an old man when I started. I was 37, man, and Bruce was only 26. Here I've taken lessons from a guy who's, who's a lot younger than me, right? But it, that age didn't matter when it started. He started showing you physically he could do it was like you went from high school to college and these guys are champion uh, Olympic divers or something, you know. He could do so much more physically than anybody else. Uh, it was just unreal, you know. You uh, you became friends, quite friendly with him. Oh, yeah. What's he like as a person? He was a fanatic. <laughs> Believe it or not, he was a fanatic. He. Uh, I was invited to dinner at uh, Dan Inosano's house, and uh, uh, him and his wife, and, uh, and uh, Bruce and his wife, and me and my wife. So I dressed up, you know, I got on some nice double knit pants and good shoes. He's got me out in the garage kicking the bag. <laughs> there was no such thing, you know, he, uh, he, he lived it. He, a lot of people, I think, dropped out because he demanded too much, he suggested too much. He says, when I'm watching television, I'm squeezing balls, you know. He says, when I'm driving my, my car, he says, I'm doing stomach exercises. When I put on my pants, I'm doing a balancing act. You see, he was consumed with the thing. No wonder he got so good, you know. What used to amaze me is who told him he could get that good? You know, how did he know? You know, because uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, physically, he outdid anybody I ever seen. At, at the end of that article, I said something about I'd put him against anybody I ever seen the clear to this day. Did he have a good sense of humor? As long as it wasn't concerning him. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was a nice guy. He was, he was mellowing out. You know, as I seen him when he was 26 and I it was there at his funeral. But I could see him mellowing out by talking to people like Colburn and in the Hollywood group, um, he was losing some of that uh, explosive quality. I was so sure that he'd blow up at me, I already had an excuse prepared. You know, it's like, you can't get mad at me, I'm your greatest fan, you know, <laughs> to change and make it laugh or something. Uh, some things would upset him and you didn't know why. I'm sure that Poteet's told it a lot, but he had a whole set of, of uh, sound effects that were different than ours, you know. I got them and I'd say, BAM, or SMASH, or SPLAT, you know, you're hitting somebody. And he had Chinese ones, he'd say, FONG. <laughs> and to me, it was kind of humorous, you know, FONG. So when nobody was looking, I'd write it on the blackboard, FONG, and I'd put a question mark. 
and we'd do something else, and then I'd look around and somebody erased it. And I thought, who erased it? And I'd go right fong on the board again, and a question mark, and I'd turn around, and it's gone again, you know? So I wrote it the third time. And this time I looked back and Bruce is erasing it and he is mad. Somebody keeps writing Fong on the damn blackboard. <laughs> Poteet's standing there threatening to tell, tell him who did it. <laughs>